Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on now. You can do better than that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, we invite you in this service, Lord. Lord, we say, have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Holy Spirit, rain down on this place. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Despite how you feel, despite of what's going on, right mind, Lord. Thank you for letting us walk into this church, Father God, with just 
being able to be in good health and strength, Lord. Lord, we humbly approach your throne of grace, Lord. We ask you, Father God, to give us grace and mercy, Father God. First of all, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for all our sins, Lord. You said that we confess our sins, Lord. You are faithful and just to forgive us all and cleanse us all from unrighteousness, Father God. God, you said when we know to do good and don't do it, it is sin. Lord, so we ask you right now, Father God, to forgive us. Lord, create in all of us a clean heart, Lord, and renew a right spirit in us. Lord, remove that stony heart, that hard heart, and give us a heart of flesh, Father God. Father God, you said, cast all your cares on me because you care, Father God. You said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to our own understanding. With all your ways, acknowledge you and you will direct our path, Lord. May we decrease and you increase, Lord. Lord, we know you are the potter and we are the clay. Mold and shape each and every one of us to be the man and woman you called us to be, Lord. Lord, we need you right now, Father God. Renew our minds, Lord. Renew our minds, Lord. Transform the way we are thinking, Lord. Lord, you say we rest not against flesh and blood, but of the principalities of deep darkness and wicked places, Lord. You said for us to put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, the feet for the gospel of uh, peace, the planet, the shield of faith, and the sword of spirit, and most of all, to pray to pray in the spirit let's pray at all times no matter what's going on lord may we pray pray is the answer to everything K K prayer is our lifeline prayer is our communication to you lord so let's put on the full armor of god lord lord we just want to say thank you lord lord we pray you touch every heart and every mind healed today lord i pray you heal deliver set free whatever it is they need lord i pray today that you give it to them father god lord we ask that you come into this service and have your way we invite you in this service we say have your way lord touch every heart and mind may this that the holy ghost just come upon them father god may they be free because in your spirit there is freedom and liberty but we got to tap into that spirit. Lord, we thank you for all the officials, Lord, here today, Father God. Continue to bless in each and every one of them, Father God. Continue to let them be steadfast, unmovable, always abounded in the work of the Lord, knowing their labor is not in vain. And Lord, most of all, we thank you for our bishop. We thank you for our bishop and first lady, Lord. Continue, Lord, to strengthen him on every side. No weapons formed against him shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against him shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. Lord, strengthen him right now in his family, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for him, Father God. Continue to give him the strength and the Holy Ghost power to preach your unadulterated truth. And Lord, most of all, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the household of faith, Lord. Continue to bless each and every one of them, Father God. And Lord, you know the desires of their heart. And may we continue to cover ourselves, Father God, cover us with your blood and hide your word in our heart so we don't sin against you. And Lord, we bless your name and give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, let your church say amen. The scripture we're going to be reading is Psalms 107. First, you're going to go to verse 1 through 2. Then we're going to go down to other verses. Psalms 107, 1 through 2. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endure forever. Let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom have redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Come on now, you have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Filled with the Holy Ghost, yes I am. All your sins have been washed away. You have been redeemed. Amen. Amen. Verse 8. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Will you praise him? Oh, that men will praise him. Amen. Verse 18, verse 15. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. God is telling you, oh, that men will praise him. Tell your neighbor to praise him. Verse 21. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works for the children of men. Hallelujah. Come on now. Praise him. Hallelujah. Verse 31. Oh, that men will praise him for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Hallelujah. God is telling us it's in your praise. 
The last scripture, let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Come on now. Exalt him in the congregation of the people. We are to exalt his holy name. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you for the reading of your word. Let us not just be hearers, but doers in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, the praise team will come forth. We pray that God will send a Shekinah glory upon them, Father God, that his anointing will be upon all of them. They will sing unto you and not man, Lord. And let the elder come forth, Father God, and let his Holy Ghost come upon him. Let the words of his mouth and the meditation of his heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give the praise team a hand as they come forth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Oh, come on, hallelujah. Slide down some. Slide down some. Hallelujah. No, you good. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get a little clap going together. Come on, let's listen. Let's give Jesus a hand this morning. Come on, how many people know that you are a friend of God? Can you declare that in your heart today, this morning, in this hour, that you are a friend of God? And if you know the song, come on, sing it along with me. Help me out, Tink, say, I am, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. time on faith and believing. Say, so I am a friend. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Come on together. Who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me. When I call Come on, is it true? Hey. Is it true that you are thinking of me? Yeah. How you love me. It's amazing. It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I am I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Come on. This is a part two. Seven so might say God. God almighty. Lord of glory. You have called. You have called me friend. Come on, somebody lift your hearts to the Lord as we say God. I am a 
Come on, lift your hands right where you at. Help us say, God Almighty. God Almighty. Lord of my Lord of glory. You have called. You have called me One more time. Say, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Hey, say over again. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. He calls me. He calls me friend. He calls me. He calls me friend. Yeah, hallelujah. He called me friend. Listen up. He calls me friend. How do many people know Jesus is your friend? He's your father. He's your friend. He's closer than a brother. Hallelujah. He calls me friend. Come on, somebody declare that in the atmosphere. He calls me friend. He called me friend. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Oh, I like the fire up in here this morning. Oh, I love the Holy Ghost fire up in here this morning. You know something happens when you call on the name of Jesus. Things happen. You know, they say mountains move, you know. Walls will fall. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yokes will be destroyed. Something happens when you call that name. Something happens. Happen. Something happens. 
for a minute because something got is bound to happen you can't call on the name of Jesus and nothing happens but you got to call on him hallelujah when I call him 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 when I call him, when I call you, when I call him, when I call you, when I call him, when I call you, something happened. at somebody in your role and tell them your life is worth fighting for. Your life is worth fighting for. Your life is worth fighting for. Come on. I mean, you got to declare that out of this atmosphere. Speaking into your life.
when you met me deep in my despair to show me you would never leave me there you claim because I was made for so much more I am your child and I work fighting for so heavy by the weight of my mistakes you carry me and refuse to let me sink under the pressure you meant for me to soar I am your child and I work fighting for help me say eyes have been seen ears have been all you have and no nothing, no and nothing, nothing can separate, separate me from your love when there's, there's so much more you are fighting for. Now I'm moving, come on, by faith and not by sight, for victory, by the power of your might, you straighten up my path, Lord, fast, open every door. Your child in a world fight for say eyes have seen ears have oh, oh, oh. all you have planned for me and no nothing no nothing, nothing can separate, separate me from your love and there's so much more you were fighting hey, for that's why I'm pressing What's the mark? The word is the calling of my life. Here's what I'm fighting for. And I'll keep my mind. Stay on you, Jesus. The word is the peace and freedom. Here's what I'm fighting for. And I'll be faithful to my wife and children. Cause my family is what I'm fighting for. So girl, it's not my home. But your kingdom here, hey, it's worth fighting for. And I got a mansion, for in glory. And my new home, it's worth fighting for. Till I see it, I shout. Hallelujah, cause my prayer is worth With you is worth fighting for. Say hallelujah. It's worth it. Hallelujah. So worth it. My prayer is worth fighting for. Listen. Eyes have been seen. Come on, say ears. Ears have been heard. Oh. All you have planned for me. Declare nothing, nothing. And nothing can separate from your love and there's so much more you're worth fighting I've had it I've had it I've had it I've come on say all you have planned for me hey no nothing no nothing and nothing can separate, separate me from your love and there's so much more you're worth fighting Stay right there in your worship. Stay right there in your worship. Stay right there. Eyes have been seen. Ears have been heard. All you have planned for me. And nothing can separate me from your love. When there's so much more still worth fighting for. Eyes have been seen. Come on, sister. Ears have been heard. Yes. 
Hallelujah. You got to claim that this morning. Claim it. Eyes haven't seen. Hallelujah. Ears haven't heard. Praise All you have planned for me. Yeah. There's nothing can separate me from your love when there's so much more still worth fine. You ready? You ready? Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, all you have planned for me, and nothing can separate me from your love when there's so much Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cause my praise, yeah. My praise, yeah. My praise, yeah. My prayer, yes. Hallelujah. Come on, my Giving God the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, congregation, do what it say. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. You say, Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Hallelujah. You say. Hallelujah. One more time. Say hallelujah. You say. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God the glory. Amen. Ain't he worthy to be praised? We serve a good God. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise. Amen. If you living and breathing and can hear, touch, taste, and smell and feel, he's worthy of the praise. Amen. Somebody give God some glory in here. I dare you step out of your comfort zone and give God the glory up in here this morning. He is worthy to be praised. You were created to praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I know y'all want me to go. I just can't, it just sounds so good. It's telling me I'm in agreement with what the Lord, he's a good God, I'm praising him. Hallelujah, I might didn't get a chance to praise him all week, but look at me. Hallelujah. Praising him over my food, I'm praising him over my health, my strength, I'm claiming something new in the new year. I want to be so fresh and to be, it be like a brand new pair of pants out the store with the tag still on it. Hallelujah. That's how I want my faith this year. I want my faith running overflowing. 
I want to see it overflow so I can bless somebody else. Amen? Besides myself. I want to give Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. I want to give him all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Jesus is so good. Hallelujah. I cannot express how good Jesus has been to me. Amen? I thank him for saving me. Amen? For healing me. For delivering me. For making me whole. He's a good God. And he's worthy to be praised. I want to give honor to the bishop and his wife, his bride, Bishop John Briscoe and Mary Ann Briscoe. Hallelujah. We call it the mother of the house. Amen. And we bless you. And we thank God for you just being in the presence. Amen. It's always an honor to be in your two presence. We thank God for what the work is doing in you. He started a good work and he shall finish it. Amen. And like my, my, my brother told no weapons formed against you shall prosper. And any false tongue that rises up against you, it shall be condemned, say, thus says the Lord. And this is the inheritance of the Lord, that anything that will come up against a man of God will have to answer to God. Amen. So we bless it being in your presence. And we thank you for your teaching. We thank you for your giving. We thank you just for being on your post at all times. Amen. Being at people's side. Giving, giving, that's all I see when I see you. A giver, hallelujah. We just bless the honor. Uh, I want to give honor to my beautiful wife, Minister Latasha, amen. Amen, hallelujah. Hallelujah, it's good to have a wife, amen. It's good to have a wife, amen. But not just any old type of wife, a Proverbs 31 woman, amen, that knows her worth. Hallelujah, she knows her worth. She works, amen. She provides, amen. She gets up early, amen, and takes care of everything. She's taking care of business. You know how this song, taking care of business. She takes care of business, amen. She's a great wife, amen. And my son, RJ, I just bless and honor you, son, for filling in over there, amen. I, I also want to honor the ministers here, amen, on staff. We bless and honor you for the work that is being brought through you and the Holy Ghost, amen, by God alone, your families, your children, your businesses, amen. I said that. I didn't stumble. Your businesses, amen. God has given some of you some things and we'll begin to pour some other things into your life as we begin to get closer. God, will, he will begin to give more of himself to us, amen. The deacons and their wives, we thank you for your commitment and amen, always faithful on your posts. We thank you for your servant too, hallelujah. Servant too, amen. Your children, my, my, uh, my, my son in the spirit, hallelujah, Jalen, over there doing something in the church, amen. They don't come to church to do nothing. They come to church to do something, hallelujah. And a whole household of faith. Visiting clergies, amen. And the clergies in the house, we honor you as well, amen. We bless and honor you. Our evangelist, our very own evangelist here at Restoration Free Gospel, Evangelist Wanda. We just bless and honor you all. Those that are doing something in the church and those that are not doing something in the church, we still bless you too because it's time to get busy for the Lord. Amen. Okay, today, Sunday, January 22nd, 2023, the series is When You Pray. Amen. When you pray. I'm Elder Russell Slade. Amen. My title today will be, He Will Cause Pain, But Pray. He Will Cause Pain, But Pray. Amen. Turn to First Chronicles, sister. Got it up there? Yes. Amen. You, you can go ahead then. Okay. Praise the Lord. First Chronicles 4, verse 9 through 10. And the Bible reads, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Verse 10, and Jabez, and Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, <laughs> and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, mm. and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Hallelujah. Amen. He will cause pain, but pray. Amen. You'll find out what I'm saying about that in a few Amen. minutes. Amen. But pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly approach your throne of grace, Lord. We just want to bless and honor you today. Lift your name up and magnify and give it the glory that is due to it, oh God. We ask for forgiveness of our sins, God. Things that we said, done, and we know that was displeasing in your eyes, like God. We ask you to cleanse us from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet, oh God. Open up our hearts and our ear gates so that we can hear from you today concerning your word and your people. And what, how shall we live today according to one another, oh God? We just bless and honor you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray that the whole church say amen and you may have a seat it will call he will cause pain but pray it's a long list of names under the family of judah amen, amen. let's give you a little brief here but it was one mention of a person named jabaz amen we know jabaz was a praying man amen he learned that his name means he will cause pain amen he will cause pain. I, though what kind of pain he caused outside of childbirth, I don't know. Amen. But I come to tell you, he was described as being more honorable. Honorable than his brethren. Amen. Are you feeling honorable than your brothers and your sisters this morning? Amen. Feel like you've been granted some special privilege before God to feel like you're more honorable than your brethren. You know, Joseph got in trouble for explaining a dream. Amen. And his brothers threw him in a pit. So be careful. Sometimes it may cause you pain, but pray. Amen. According to the Jewish tradition, it is that Jabal, Jabez founded a famous line of doctors, a lawyer, a priest. And I mean, just think about it. He founded it. It was a city of scribes named Jabez. You can find that in First Chronicle 2.55. Amen. For readers' sake, we're going to skip that one, sister. Many wonder what made Jabez so honorable. There's not much mention about him, but his prayer. He's uh -huh. trying to tell you something. He had a prayer life. Amen. Do you have a prayer life? Do you have a prayer life? Amen. Can you honestly say, I pray over my food, I pray at night? I pray when I get up in the morning before I lose my house. I pray when I get back in the house. I pray while I'm on my job. I pray, 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 pray. Because if you do got that type of prayer life, you're on your way to your destiny. Amen? you on your way. Perhaps it was his prayer that made him stand out from those around you. As Christian, we ought to want to stand out away from those that are around us. Amen? We have to be examples of Christ in the earth realm. Amen. So we need to, we can't be afraid when we go out to make a D's and we get a hamburger and some french fries. That's what I'm going to call them. French fries. You know how the kids ask for it. I want some french fries. And we sit there and we act like we don't want to pray. Get all nervous. You pray. You pray. I prayed last week. Your turn. My, my, my. Your turn. Pray. We can't be afraid to pray. Amen? Amen. So maybe it was that prayer that made him stand up because he was always praying. Amen. Look what he said. He said, oh, that you would bless me indeed. I like how that rolled off. You wouldn't bless me. For most of Jabez's prayer, it was bold it may be brass to most people because they thought it was a selfish prayer, but it was not a selfish prayer because it revolved around him. And everybody was like, I want this. And I, it's, not, it's not a bad thing to ask what you want from the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen? It's not a bad thing. Just don't be selfish with it. It's not a bad thing. He asked for great favor from God. Are you asking for great favor? Favor from God today. Amen. Are you asking him? It is no more bold than when Jacob wrestled with an angel of God demanding a blessing before he would release him. Amen. That's what he did. Look at Genesis 32, sister. And as we go along, go to the next verse and wait for me, please. Because okay. I, I don't want to tell you, read and you already will be there. Amen. And we can okay. just keep on and we'll hold the people up. Genesis Chapter 32, verses 24 through 26. Uh huh. And the Bible reads, And Jacob was left alone, and there, excuse me, and there wrestled a, wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Mm. 
And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, <laughs> he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Gotcha. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thy bless me. He will cause you pain sometimes. Yes. Amen. Praying for things that you want in the van. You want things early before God sets you up real good. You got to let God get your temper right. You got to let God get your attitude right. You got to let God get your mindset right. You got to let him work on you a little bit before he give you these things. So be careful because sometimes when you pray out of order to you pray, it will cause you pain. But I tell you today, pray. Pray because Jacob, he, he said that uh, he wrestled with himself. Right, right, See, he's right. wrestling with issues and circumstances with inside himself. And he can't prevail because it's, it's an angel. He's Amen. wrestling. Amen. And he touched the hollow of his socket. Amen. God might have to come down and touch your hollow of your socket. My, my, and give my. you a limp and cause you to walk around as a reminder to how great and powerful he is. And what he's trying to do in your life. If you would just get out the way and pray. Look, if we come to, a, we come to James 17, we know that every good gift comes from above. Every gift comes from above. Go ahead, sister. You can read okay. this because I'm going to go through uh, some of these verses. Uh, Genesis chapter 32, verse 29, and the Bible reads, And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thou name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou doest ask after my name? And he blessed him there. That's still with the Genesis. Go. That's not with the every good gift, but... Yeah, but, he, that's oh. his name. You see what I mean? He said, it, it's not important about the name. But when you call on that name of Jesus, you Come better on. believe it lines up with his will. You shall receive it. Amen. And you might get it a little earlier, so be careful and make sure you're getting yourself lined up with God's will. So when it comes down your way, at least you'll be a little better prepared Amen. to handle the gift or the presence that God is bestowing upon you. Amen. But we see that every gift is from God. And that's Amen. why I was going to James 1.17. 1, and the Bible reads, James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift Look at that. is from above. Hallelujah. And cometh down from the Father of lights, down. with whom is no variableness, neither uh -huh. shadow of turning. I like when he said no variableness. You know what I mean? It ain't, it ain't no, look, it ain't no you a favorite over here and you ain't favorite. You know what I mean? You got it going on over here. I can't. No, it ain't no favoritism with God. Amen. Yeah. He gave it to you because he knew you can handle it. Amen. Yeah. He designed and built you to handle what he's about to yeah. give you. Yeah. Amen. Just know that whatever God is birthing through you and it's about to come out. But he has already ordained it for you to happen yeah. the way he called it to happen. You just have to hold on. And it may cause some pain. But pray. Amen. Blessings are not just a gift. They are life-changing benefits Amen. from God. Amen. Amen. Go to the next. In Jesus, okay. we have all spiritual blessings. Amen. In yeah. Jesus, though. You heard that? In Jesus. Acts 3.26. And the Bible reads, Unto you, first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, mm. and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Oh, my God. This is the reason Jesus came. He came to bring us blessings by turning us away from sin. Amen? Amen. My God. So blessings are not just a gift. They are life-changing benefits from God. Amen. Amen. In Jesus, we have all spiritual blessings. Ephesians 1.3. Yes, and the Bible reads, Blessed be the God mm. and Father of of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. <laughs> I thank God for that. God will supply all of our needs. Amen? Amen. He already know, but we he wants us to pray to him for him. He just wants to hear from you. I mean, why are we going to be so stingy, just don't want to talk? You know, sometimes like a little child, we shut down on our parents, and we don't want we don't want to speak, and we don't want to talk because we want something from them, but we don't want to open our mouths up to get it. 
But here he is. God will supply all your needs in Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4.19 in the Bible reads, uh -huh. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He will supply all Thank your you needs. Lord. But you gonna, don't think you're just going to get them. You got to pray to get them. You have to pray until you receive them. Amen. If you pray, believing that you, uh, you pray that you believe that you already received them, they'll, they'll come to you faster. Amen. Got to have faith in, in what you're praying for. Amen. Amen. And believe God that he's, he's able and capable, capable Amen. enough to give you what you're asking for. Yes, yes. But sometimes we don't want to act like that. Wow. We want to do it the other way. But here uh -huh. we see both Jabez and Jacob fully and sincerely they believe that God would bless them. Do you believe God would bless you? Yes. Come on, you got to believe that God would bless you. Amen. I know he bless you. Amen. Amen. You're sitting here right now in front of me, but Thank God you, will Lord. bless you. That's why J. Brown say, enlarge my borders. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Enlarge them. J. Brown is not just asking for more territory. Uh -huh. He's asking God for more responsibility because it's responsibility and work that comes along with it as well. So many of us want to ask God for more of this world's wealth, but what will we do when, it, when we get it? It's the question. Wow. Are you willing to take on the extra burden that comes with it? You say, Lord, give me a bigger church. Lord, give me a bigger house. Lord, give me a bigger bank account. Can you manage the one bank account you got? And you talking about give me another one. Give me a bigger bank account. Give me all. Give it, give me, give me, give me, give me. And look what my boy did when um the prodigal. See, we got that prodigal mindset. We asking things from God before it's time. And then when, when the father gave it to him, he ran off and he swandered all his earnings among prostitutes and the things in the world. And then it wasn't until he found himself in the pig pen that he come to his senses and he said, I'll go to my father. Yes. Crying on to the father now. I'll go to him as a hard servant this time. Not as a son. And he finds himself, when he meets his father, being kissed and greeted in love. As he came back, because Jesus, how many people know, Jesus will forgive you. And he will receive you. He will restore you. Because that's the type of God we serve. But we got to have faith and know. So don't ask for things that you're not willing to take on the extra that comes with it. Like I said, he will cause pain. But pray. But pray. Look at First, look at first Timothy 6, 6 to 10. And the Bible reads, But godliness with contentment is great gain, mm. for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Hallelujah. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. My goodness. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lust, which so drown men <laughs> in destruction and perdition. For the love of money mm. is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Mm. My God. The rich will face more temptation because you got so much money you don't know what to do with yourself. You ain't got to go work, so you got all the money. Your money working for you all the time. You got the money working for you. You got the devil working for you. Everything working against you. Jesus. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with being rich. You can be rich, but you got to know what to do when the riches come. Amen. Right, right, right. You can't forget your first love when the riches come. Right. You know, many of us were hit. Hit a number. Come on. Oh, see, it got real quiet in here. <laughs> well, hit that lottery. Hit bingo. <laughs> Scream bingo. T bingo. Got it. Right over here. Come on. I got it right there. Bring that money over here. <laughs> then you know it's a change in your demeanor. My Lord. 
change in your atmosphere. Start walking a little different. You didn't walk in the bingo place like that. You didn't walk. Your walk getting start a little smoother. Getting a little suave with yourself now. Start feeling yourself. And God said that the rich will face more temptation. Will your faith survive what you are asking for? Oh. Amen. Amen. It will cause you pain sometimes. Amen. Amen. You heard it from the word, not from me. Right. right. God expects extra duties from the wealthy. That's Jesus. what he's saying to me. Look at 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19. And the Bible reads. In case you want a whole bunch of money. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be <laughs> not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, oh. but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Verse 18, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. My goodness. Verse 19, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. See, that's the whole point, uh -huh. that you may lay hold on eternal life. God expects extra duty from the wealthy. Amen? Yeah. You're just storing it up. Amen? Yeah. You're storing it up for those that God has already known. See, Daddy's going to reward you real soon. I'm going to tell somebody that I hope you caught that in your supernatural spirit. Daddy's going to reward you real soon. He know exactly what you've been laboring. He know how hard you've been, how faithful you've been working for Jesus. And he's going to reward you real soon. But you have to pray for the rich man. Amen. Amen. Pray for him. Let him heap it all up for you. Amen. Go ahead. Don't care if you get $10 billion. Tell him I want you to have $20 billion. Pray, pray for him. Mm. Pray for him because it's going to come to you one day real soon. Amen. And I'm expecting to have some of that money. Amen. Amen. I receive it. <laughs> I, I receive it. I want to work so hard. Yes, yes, Lord. But don't forget to help others when you're doing it. That's right. Look at Ephesians 4, 28. And the Bible reads, mm -hmm. let him that stole steal no more. Oh, my goodness. But rather, let him labor, <laughs> working with his hands the thing which is good, it's good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Mm, see, you always should be looking for somebody that doesn't need. Amen. Amen, because, you know, we live in nice homes. We drive nice cars. We got gas in our car and stuff. And you see somebody, you pull up to a pump, you see somebody pumping, they only got $5 in their, in, in their, in their tank. I mean, putting $5 on there. Go ahead, go ahead and go in the store or something on them. You know what I mean? Say, hold on, man, I'm going to go ahead and pip 10 more on you, okay? I'm going to 10 more on there for you. Right, you don't owe me nothing. Yeah, I ain't a stranger and I ain't stalking you. I just want to bless you, amen? It's how you communicate with people. They'll receive it, amen? Amen. And tell them one day when you get blessed, you just bless somebody else like Amen. that. Amen. Pass it on. That's what it's saying. We should help others the same way God has helped us and poured his blessings upon us. We should be willing to bless somebody else. Amen. We are to give God as we have prospered. That's, that's first. You got that right? First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Yes. Um, chapter um, 16, verse uh -huh. 2. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. I mean, I, sometimes I, I marvel at the fact that we make so many excuses about what we're doing and the money that comes in and throughout the church, that we focus on the negative so bad about what everybody else filters in our ear gates that we forget all about the blessing that we want from our personal relationship we have with God. Uh -huh. If you have a personal relationship with him and you're praying and you're digging and you're seeking him in the scriptures, you'll see exactly what the scriptures are telling you. We, we are to give God as he prospers us. Amen. Why not? What's wrong with the tenth? What's wrong with it? But you have no problem going to McDonald's or wherever and, 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 and whatever you choose to do. And you give it all away like that. But when you come into the house, we know the lights got to stay on, right? Let's be real. Amen. The mics need batteries. I mean, it's things in there to keep this thing moving. Amen. And God said, as you being my people yes. who are called by my name, right? right? But the thing is, we ain't humbling ourselves. 
We're not seeking his face and his will because we would know that if we sought after God through scripture and prayer and fasting, we would know exactly what the word is telling us to do. So we don't need a man to tell us to put our tithes in the offering box. We don't need a man to direct us what we should be doing. It's mandatory for you and God. That's your relationship you have God. That's why we leave it up to you and God. However you, however you fashion, lays upon your heart to give, that's your giving. If you don't believe in tithing, then maybe you need to go back and read the Bible a little bit harder. My Lord. And a little longer. Jesus. Maybe you need to lay down your face until he answers you but concerning tithe. Amen. Or maybe your mind is you so headstrong that you don't feel as though you should do it. Because you'd rather be doing something else better with your money. It's too quiet up here. Y'all got me scared. It's like a funeral. Enlarging our borders can be more than just physical wealth and responsibility. Okay. Go to John 10.10. 10. John 10, chapter 10, verse 16. Mm -mm, John 10.10. 10. Oh, 10, 10. Yes. Mm-hmm. John okay, John 10.10. 10. 10. The th and the Bible reads, The thief cometh not, ha. but for to steal and Look to kill and to destroy. Look at I am come that they might have life and that, and that they might have it more abundantly. He came to give you the abundant life. That's why he left his word on record for you. Right, Amen. Right. Hallelujah. I'm grateful for the word of God. Thank that was left on there because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He come to steal your faith. Hey Amen. Amen. He come to kill you. Man, he, he wants your heritage. You know that? Yeah. He wants to take it away from you. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy every good thing that God has placed in you for the right time to separate you, to get you out there out the pack. Now you're no longer running with Jesus. You're running with the pack of wolves. That you once ran with. You know what? The same ones that you left out there when God called you and you heard them. Because it, no man comes unless the spirit of the Lord draws him. So when you heard that call, it wasn't the wolf call no more. How? It wasn't that call. It was Jesus calling you. And you came in. And when you came in, I guarantee you that same pack is waiting for you. Matter of fact, it might attack you when you come back out. What are you doing out here? You look good to eat. I want to sift you as wheat. My Lord. I want to take you out, have you for a nice snack. We got to be careful. That's why he said, I came to give you abundant. Right. Right. Jesus wants to give you abundance of wealth, health. You know, he even gave you health so that you can get wealth. Amen. He even died and became poor so that you could come, become rich. It's the word. That's what he wants. He wants you to be rich. He wants you to have, as a matter of fact, you're already spiritually rich. Amen. You stand against these people and you think because your clothes don't look like their clothes and your house don't look like their house and your car, but guess what? You get inside that house and it will cause you pain. We have to take over that man mortgage. You have to take over that man car payment. You have to take over that man marriage. You don't know what's going on in there. You don't know. So you got to be careful. Pray. Pray. Stay in your lane. Wow. An interest to the heavenly kingdom is abundantly supplied. It's already supplied. Everything has already been supplied for you. Mm. Look at 2 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. I mean 111. 2 Peter 1.11. Uh-huh. And the Bible reads, For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly, into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. An abundant supply of wow. all. Say a supply all you need, but not this in heaven, okay? It's here on earth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's, it's, I mean, you just got to line it up with God's will. He has it for you. Trust me. And he wants to give it to you, but you got to get right. Amen. You got to get into this word and see what this word said because you don't want to be praying any old type of prayers to God and asking for stuff and then all of a sudden you find yourself in pain. Mm -hmm. I wish I didn't never ask for that Mercedes because now that Mercedes Benz been in the shop for, for two years and I only had it, drove it 
out of that two years for two weeks. I can't even put the brakes on it. That's how much it costs. You wanted the 2022, didn't you? You asked God for it. But when we ask him, we ask him in a mess because we know we can't handle some of the things we're asking for. Be careful. It will cause you pain. One oil change will cause you pain. The windshield wiper will be like you buying a dishwasher. Hey, watch yourself. Pray. Make sure you're lining up. In Christ, our spiritual borders are enlarged. I know we want to pray for more stuff. Keep praying. Look what Ephesians 3, 17, 21 says, because we want a lot. Ephesians 3, verse 17, mm -hmm. that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints mm -hmm. what is the breadth uh -huh. and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, <laughs> abundantly, above, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto <laughs> him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Don't that sound like it's, 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 been a, it's already enlarged? That your board is already enlarged. But look what 18 said, may be may be able to comprehend with all saints. Amen. Because I don't think we understand. That's why Solomon prayed for an understanding heart. He know he had to deal with the saints of God. Amen. And he know how they can be. They can be something at times. Amen. They can come at you this way and that way. But you got to have an understanding heart that you were once like them. Yeah, you was once like him. I know it's hard to take, but you was once. You acted just like him. Come on, tell the truth. Came in here, you claimed the front row seat that was yours and bet nobody sit in it. Came in here and looked at the sister. She had a nice hat on, and she really thinks she's all that. Because you wasn't saved. You wasn't healed. But look at you now. Look at me now. I was a dressed up trash can when I was out there. And the sister back here could contest to it. And my sister, I put you on blast. Don't worry, but it's a good blast. My sister back here, she never could tell you. I was a dressed up trash can. A hot mess. Ready to be tossed out in somebody's trash, the dumpster. Ready to go to the city field somewhere. And to be scattered among my other friends. But God wouldn't let it be so. Thank you, Lord. Trouble didn't last that long in my life. Thank you, Lord. A new trouble comes along with a new prayer, amen? The Jabez prayer, amen? Be careful what you're praying for because you just might get it. And if you get it, you might not be ready. So pray. So in Christ, our spiritual borders are enlarged, Amen? But with it comes responsibility with that, more, with that work you got to do. You can't have more without expecting to put more out. You got to put something out. You got to put something in to get something out. Amen. Listen to the last prayer. That your hand might be with me. It's Jay Bass. Uh -huh. He just want the hand of God. Why? Because it's so tough and it's so tight right now. And there's so much stuff going on. He say, that your hand might be with me. We are strengthened by God's spirit within us. Look mm -hmm. at Ephesians 3.16. And the Bible hey. reads, That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. <laughs> Your inner man needs to be strengthened. Your outer man seems to be having all the fun. He's wearing all these nice clothes and all these shoes and he's doing all this stuff, but the inside is dead and empty. Hear somebody speaking tongues, the first thing you say, they're faking. Oh, Lord. 
Come on, man. It ain't like we never heard it before. Let's make it, let's get real with ourselves, you know? You need to strip, be strengthened in the inside, in your inner man. You need to lay on your knees. You need to fast. You need to pray before God to fill you up Amen. with his spirit Amen. in his presence. Mm. There's nothing wrong with it. But why you really need it, you need to be strengthened because right now, when you're praying for these things, man, if you don't have the strength of God working on your side, when these things come, because God don't he want you to fail. And he don't want you to look like a fool. I, I remember praying to God at times, and I was praying, and I knew God. I said, God, please don't let me look like a fool in front of these people. Please, Lord, I didn't just put your name out there. You know what I mean? I didn't threw your name out there. A couple of days go by, I'm sweating, Bishop, because it didn't happen the way I said it was going to happen. And I said, well, you know why it didn't happen? Because God didn't say it. Amen. See, let me be real with you. Let me be transparent. Some things we're saying God didn't say. Amen. And we saying them and, and, and God, other people believe them, getting their hype. They're getting all hyped up and getting their hopes up. And then, boom, it doesn't happen that way. But this day, I pray for some, I pray for some things that I've seen in a person's life. I just felt it. I walked past and I said, God, I see, I see healing. Like when my sister came in the door, I said, oh, my God, I see strength and power. That's what I've seen. Seeing God moving on her. Amen. If you have seen what we've seen, you would know. That God is able. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can even imagine or even think of. That's why he said my ways and my thoughts are higher than yours. But we're thinking so carnal minded. We're thinking everybody's trying to trick us and everybody's trying to take us for a ride. Amen. We've been taking people for a ride so long that we're afraid that it's time to come back around. We know everybody, we always say, that's karma. Come on, man. It's just the way, it's just the way God operates. When we are not compassionate, we don't show mercy. It's a mercy of flee from you. We don't want to show, we don't want to give anybody any grace or we don't want to be loving to people. It comes back to you. It's just the way God works. He allow it to come. Amen. But look at what Philippians 13 said. 413. Look what it says. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Go one more verse. Okay. Verse 14. Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Look at that. We don't understand. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and loves me. Matter of fact, he loves you and strengthens you. And that's why your communication has to be wide open. You got to communicate with him. He wants to hear from you. And he even also, he gets to a point in 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7. He said, cast your cares on God because he will care for you. You can read this. I'm just going in. Oh, 1 mm -hmm. Peter 5, 6, 7. That's what you Yes. Okay. Humble yourselves there. Under the mighty hand of God, mm. that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Are you humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God? Are you looking for your due season to come? After all those years humbling yourself, taking the, taking the pain that may be brought in by some of the things you're praying for, taking the pain from some people that may be coming against you or whatever, but are you humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God? Because if you humble yourself, you say if you will exalt yourself, you will be humiliated, but if you humble yourself, you will be exalted. Amen. That's the word of God. Amen? David said that God upholds the righteous. Amen. 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 Psalm 37, 23. Psalm, thir mm -hmm. Psalm 37, verses 23 through 34. 23, and the Bible reads, The steps of a good man are <laughs> ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, 
For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. We need God's strength. Bishop, we need it. We need it. Because if not, without God, it will cause pain. But I'm telling you, pray. Amen. Peter had a little issue with the enemy because Peter did what God asked him. And, but Peter had some ways that he fell short before God, like we all have fell short. And the devil said, no, hold on. Jesus said, the devil wants to sift you as we. <laughs> he wants to sift. He said, but I pray for you that your faith faileth not. Are you praying for people when you see them feeling a little, you know, you see them getting a little, um, they're getting a little faint from all the things they've been doing. They're tired in the, in the ministry and they're tired in their lives and their everyday life. And you see them going through, are you willing to pray for them? You don't have to tell them. But just go and pray for them. You know what I mean? Pray for them, man. I thank God for those that pray for me. Y'all just don't know. Keep the, keep the fire burning. Amen. Because there's at times I come home, I'm so tired from work, you know what I mean? And, and, and your guards go down. Your guards get a little low, you know what I mean? And, 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 and that's when that enemy come in like a snake bite. And he'll, he'll hit you, and you think, you think that old man is dead, right? And he hit you so good, and the things that come out your mouth, oh, my goodness. Come out your mouth, I'm telling you. Come out your mouth, and, and, and it should have came out another place. But I'm telling you, that's how bad it is. It's very bad. You have to be very careful on how the enemy, his tactics. And, and he knows you as well because he's watching you. Amen. Yeah. He's watching you as, as long as God is watching you. The enemy is watching you too. He's walking around. He's, he's, he says he's walking around seeking, uh, seeking who he may devour. Like a roaring lion. Waiting for a moment to pounce on you. You come out the door and you didn't pray this morning. He pounces right on you. Brung up some stuff you did 14 years ago. Slam something in your mind that you thought about probably 20 years ago. And once you be trained with that thought, you know it's like an old song. Once somebody sing a song and you hear it, it get catchy. It get catchy and before you know it, you singing it all day. So if he can hit you in the morning like that, he catch you, hopefully his plan is that your rest of your day will be messed up. You got to be careful. That's why we need to pray. And I'm going to continue to say it. I'll say it again and again and again because it's more implied than what is said. If we want God's help and his aid, then we are saying to ourselves and him, God, we place our lives right now into your care. We need to be more than volunteers, servants of God. If we want to receive the much more from him. No one can remove us from the mighty hand of of Jesus. Look at John 10, 28 and 29. And the Bible reads, Amen. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 29, mm -hmm. My Father which gave them is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. <sighs> Jesus has a mighty hand. And once you're in his hands, you in his care, you cast your cares upon him, and he taking on this. Man, you under his authority, you under that power, there's nothing that can come up against you. No weapons can form against you shall prosper. I'm not saying they wouldn't be formed, but they won't have no success. They won't. Because the Bible tells us in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and has been called according to his purpose. Amen. If you've been called to God's purpose, no weapons will be formed against you. They'll just, well, excuse me, they'll be formed against you, but they won't prosper. They just won't work, as the psalmist said. They, they just won't work. Just won't work. I'm talking to somebody right now in the Holy Ghost. It just won't work. I know they've been coming against you. They've been calling you all types of names. They've been, they've been coming against you. It just won't work. It won't work. None of us can be removed from the mighty hand of Jesus. And look what he said, that you would keep me from harm, that it may not pain me. This is, this is, this is J-Bass. J-Bass is talking to somebody this morning. That you would keep me, God, from harm, that it may not pain me. God watches over and cares for his people. 
But listen, J. Badge is not just acknowledging that his request is spiritually dangerous. He's telling you, this request is spiritually dangerous. You watch yourself praying the prayer of J. Badge. Because all I'm telling you is you got to stay prayed up. He is more open to harm. Why? Because the enemy coming at him day and night like he comes against us. He's a taunt of the brother day and night. He's constantly taunting you. Look at him, God. He can't do nothing right. Look at her. She can't do anything right. But we know that God just showed us in that, that last verse that he can't be snatched out of his hand. You in his hand. Place your cares upon, cast your cares upon him. Put yourself in his hand and see if anybody, you know that little game we used to play. Look, look at D. Go ahead, D. We get that quarter. Can't okay, get that bad boy. Got him. And then he playing with the devil like that. He said, come in, come in, come in, say. He said, go sit down. Go, go sit down. You, you can't, you, you know you're not fast enough. You've been doing this. How many years we've been doing this? And you still ain't got him out my hand yet. So I bless God for that. Hallelujah. Look at 32 to 15. Deuteronomy 32 15. But Jezreel waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Don't that, that sound like you done forgot the Lord. <laughs> That sound like that sound like you done got so look, I'm gonna let you go. That sound like you done you done got all these things from God now. You done forgot all but your first love now. My, my, my. You you wax fat now. Got your large house, you got your you your territory, you got a garage out there, a sixteen car garage. <laughs> you know, cause I don't think small. Okay. You got a TV screen bigger than the church. My, my, my. Only two people in the house. Lord. And I'm not saying nothing wrong with that. Because right, right, right. I think big, too. Okay. But the thing is, you have to think like God thinks. Yeah. See, what God thinks about this. Are you going to let somebody come in there and watch the TV with you? <laughs> nope. Take your shoes off. Can't come in here. My Lord. You know how we get. Mm -hmm. Wait, that was it, sis? Uh-uh. Uh, then he forsook. Forsook God, I'm sorry. which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Forgot all but him. My Lord. And I know sometimes we want to be all holy in the church and make like we ain't never forget all but God. I know how it is, y'all. Don't Look, I'm not talking but you. I'm going to talk with me today here. Yeah? Forgot all but him, you know. Hey, got a little something, forgot. Boom. And I'm going to tell you, when I go back and look for it, it's gone. Uh -huh. I said, boy, you ain't play that game no more. Y'all been new. I had mixed my tithe money up with my regular money. Wow. So once I touched that money, it became all the money. I was, and I called myself rolling out here, too. And I already been paid for I repented, y'all. Yeah. I know y'all want to know if I repented. <laughs> I repented. Yes, I did. I repented. But guess what? I paid, too. I paid because when I went to back, I went the same pants I had. I think I folded them up. I went back to look at them with nothing in them bad boys. Right. Might have been outside talking, you know, felt good luck. Right. You know, you know how you do. You get outside, you start talking, you move your hands, and things start coming out. Look, yeah, you know, I was down. Money gone. You know, ain't nobody gonna tell you. You just lost a stack. <laughs> just lost a thousand dollars. You think they gonna tell you? They're going to say Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> Happy New Year's to all this money. So we got to never forget the Lord who gives. And he gives us generously. He gives us an abundance life. Amen. As the scriptures say, he gives, he gives, he gives. But look at Deuteronomy 31.20. And the Bible reads, Deuteronomy 31.20. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves and waxen fat. Then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me and break my covenant. Came out of jail. 
So I wasn't going to do that anymore, D. Came straight back out of jail, went right back in the street. I know I already made a vow with him. Went straight back in the street, caught myself getting busy. There was facing 15, uh, 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 was my back of time, eight years. Scared to life. My wife knew I was scared. I was shaking in my boots. I told my bishop know I was shaking too. So I ain't trying to go back behind that wall. But see, we forget so fast what God does for us. I made that when I was in the wall. I said, Lord, I won't do that no more. Right, right. I ain't going to do that no more, God. See, but I came out like Jacob. I came out like a trickster. Came out thinking I can trick God or somebody. Like I was, see, I lost my mind there. Because you can't trick God. You can't twat the plans of God either that he had for you. So it ended up working for his good because I ended up down the church anyway. No matter what I did, when I repented of, of, of my wrongdoings, he was still there as a loving father, and he allowed me to come back, and he restored me, and I've been here ever since. Amen? So, I, so it is a good side to the story. Amen? But it did cost me some pain because every, every night for, like, uh, they kept postponing the case, and and postpone the case, and my baby, I know she seen me worried, man, in my face. I was worried. I said, I'm about to go behind the wall again. No. I'm going back hell. That's why I was in my mind. Just left that place. Tell me when I can go bathroom, when I can get something to eat, when I can open up a snack. I got too many shoes in, in the room. I got too many pants in there. I got this. I got that. You can't do this. You can't. I, I was tired of it. I don't know, but y'all, I ain't going back. The prison's like a revolving door. Not for me, though. Not for Lord. me. So all I'm saying is, it happened repeatedly. Children of Israel did these things and turned around to foreign gods and they knew what the word says, and yet they did the opposite. And God doesn't, let me tell you something. A lot of people say, well, why was you so tempted and why all this evil was coming your way? But let me tell you, God didn't send it. It was James, read James 1, 12 and 13. God doesn't tempt us with evil. James 1, verses 12 and 13 in the Bible reads, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, mm. which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Verse 13, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Look at that. The blessings that we think we want so much can put us into the path of evil. God ain't do it. God didn't do that. Uh -huh. I know a lot of people like to say that God did that to me. Why God? Why you did that? No, he ain't do it to you. Right, right, right. You wanted to be there. You wanted, to, you wanted it all, and he gave it to you. He's just a good father. You can have it. You don't want it with, but see, one thing you can't have is have that without him. Because you need him. He's your balance. Amen? Amen? He will balance it out. Even Jesus, in a sample prayer, he urged his disciples. Look what he tell them. He asked them, he told them, actually, you need to, you need to be delivered from evil. Look at Matthew 16. He told the disciples, talking to the church now, Matthew 6, uh, 13. Okay, that's what I have. Matthew 6, 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You need to be delivered from evil. Amen. Because just because you're a Christian don't mean evil ain't going to be around you. Come on. Paul dealt with the evil, amen? He said, when I, wa when I, when I wish to do good, amen? Evil. 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 <laughs> Look at that. Evil was always present. Oh. The things I want to do, I find myself not. The oh. things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Yeah. Amen? Sometimes we find ourselves doing some things that we ought not to be doing, amen? amen. But we just got to keep on praying, amen? It's causing you pain for a reason because it's trying to get you to separate from that thing that's causing you pain so that you can let it go and let God, amen? amen. That's, what top, that's what we need to do. Pray, saints. Pray. Pray. God knows how to deliver, and I'm just going to paraphrase and go through it. He knows how to deliver, and you can for your own time check out in 2 Peter 2.9. God knows 
how to deliver. Amen? Amen. He'll deliver you. Just like he did the children of Israel at the Red Sea. Amen? He said, Pharaoh, the mean old Pharaoh was on his back. Amen? Amen. Was chasing them down. And they looked back and he said, just like that. He built a highway. Ooh. He's able to go across on dry ground. Amen? He knows how to deliver you. He delivered me. I was out there smoking PCP and crack cocaine. Amen. I ain't glorifying any type of drugs. Amen. I don't do that stuff today. Amen. I don't think about I've been delivered. The blood of Jesus delivered me. But I'm trying to tell you, he knows how to deliver. He knows us. Hallelujah. Too many have been buffled by Satan to think you are too far in sin. You can't turn around. Too far in it. God saved Lot from the evils of Sodom. Look at that. that you can find that in 2 uh, Peter uh, chapter 2, 7 through 8. Amen. God saved Noah from, from the evil world itself in the beginning. That's, you can find that in 2 Peter 2, 5. Amen. God can save us as well if we will just ask him. Just ask God, man. Ask him. This is what J-Bass said. God granted him that quest. And look, it was simple. He granted the request to him. And are you surprised? Are you surprised when God does something for a child of God? Are you surprised when you pray and something happens the way you prayed it? Are you really surprised? Matthew 7, and this is the last one I'm going to get you reading and we're closing with this. Amen. Matthew chapter 7, 7 through 11. Are you seeking God's blessing is my question before you read, sister. Are you looking to do the greater work? He said, he that has begun a great work in you, he's faithful to perform. God is faithful to perform. He's going to do it just like he said he's going to do it. Amen. He had, he's going to do it. He's going to work it out. Okay. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 through 11. Mm -hmm. Ask, and it shall be given you. Mm. Seek, Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Mm. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Hmm. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Mm, Amen. Mm -mm. The Father, which is in heaven, will give good things to them that ask them in prayer. Amen. You got to approach the throne of grace in prayer. Amen. And you got to learn how to fast. You got to turn some things down so that God can turn some things over to you. Amen. Amen. Turn them down. Turn them loose and let God bless you. He wants to bless you. Amen. So today, in this prayer, J. Baz's prayer, an honorable man praying. Amen. And many of you are honorable, honorable people before God. God hears your prayer day and night as an undertone, day and night, night and day. You're praying before the Lord. Don't think he didn't hear you. He's trying to bless you. Just turn it over. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly approach your.